The intention was never, how do I make myself a billionaire, which is the metric of success for so many people. The intention was, I really want to be a political scientist, and I want a job I really love. I want to make a difference. I want to matter. I want to feel like I've had purpose. How can I do that? It's interesting to grow up without a male role model. That's perhaps the most significant thing, is the people that were powerful in my life were strong women in the family, and my mother in particular. It wasn't an unsafe environment, it was poor, but what I had was a family. And when you have that, you believe in yourself. You can keep working at things. I do know that in the rarefied echelons, in environments where people are very successful, they typically came with a lot of network, with money or with connections or the rest. The challenge for me was in figuring out how to break into, how to have access to what shouldn't be closed groups, but are by their very nature. So I went to Tulane on a scholarship. I was 15 years old. And even though in academically I excelled there, you just couldn't break in. And I got into Stanford um, on the back of some professors using every connection they had. If I had been a little bit less um, insufferable, if I had been a little bit less pushy, like 5% less, I don't think I get in. There are massive pockets of brilliance all over the world, but they don't have the ability to prove it. They don't have the ability to show themselves because they don't have a network. That is not their fault. And this idea that we're somehow better or more capable by an accident of birth. I mean, I grew up white, male, with an incredibly loving and supportive mother in the United States of America. Even with all those benefits, the top circles are still closed off. So I intended with my undergraduate, master's, PhD, okay, let's go get a job, so I moved to New York. I had no intention of setting up a company. I didn't know anyone that had done that, right? I, I literally had, did not know a single person that had set up my company in life. No one, no one had ever done that. Um, I just wanted a job. I wanted a real job where I could be a political scientist. And I, once I finished my PhD, I realized that that didn't exist in the private sector. So after a year of figuring out it didn't exist, I kind of backed into having to create my own. And that's that the kind of the rest, as they say, is history. I don't think you can go into a room with a prime minister, a president, a foreign minister, and you know, say, hey, I've got some great stuff to tell you. These are people whose schedules are among the most challenging of anyone in the world. Right? Their time is an incredibly limited asset in a way that most people cannot fathom. And so if you're in front of them, the first thing you have to be aware of is the fact that they are giving you their time, their single most precious resource. So it's critical that they are getting something of value every single time you're in front of them. Never, ever waste a person's time. It's the worst thing you can do. In order to achieve anything in this world, you have to focus on your own capabilities and your skill sets. You have to develop them. And you have to also have to focus on how it works in society the substance and the network. You have to put the work in. You have to have the expertise, you know? And that takes time, it takes real effort. So you have to have people that can give you advice and expertise. Those people don't need to be connected, but they need to know enough about how things work that they can tell you how you could be connected. People can tell when you are passionate and authentic about what you believe. And so I think the fact that I legitimately don't think I have all the answers about the world, I'm studying this just like everybody else is, I think feels authentic to other people. And I think that's what creates connection, right? So I feel comfortable going out there and being a political scientist. And you can put me on a stage with almost anyone and I, I, I don't get scared, right? I can handle that and I don't feel like I'm faking it. Um, I think what's changed is I'm more aware that if I say something or I write something that people will actually read it or listen to it. 
I mean, more than anything else, if I've been given anything by the 20 years, I've suddenly been given a platform where I can inspire young people to learn more about the world, to understand more, not to be disgruntled or put off because they hate their politicians and everything else, not tune out and say, hey, this is something that you can really engage in and I, I at least want to be there, a little there for you. I, I, I feel a responsibility for that. I, I feel, and that's, that's something I'm aware of now that if you'd asked me 20 years ago, do I think I'll be doing this, I wouldn't have known that. And I'm very grateful for it. I think it's, a, it's an incredible, um, it's an honor, it's a responsibility, it's a vocation. It feels more important to me uh, than anything else I do.